are you missing something? This simple dongle could open up a new window in your ham radio world. Hello once again and welcome to the Waters and Sunton video channel. Do you know what's happening on around you? Now I don't mean generally, I mean amateur radio. Do you know what's happening around you on the radio frequencies? Not necessarily the handbands, but the bits outside the handbands. Or maybe on the bands that you haven't got a transceiver for. Maybe you're an HF guy and you just wonder what's happening on two meters these days. You haven't got a transceiver that covers that band. So what is actually happening? And is it important? Well I think it is important to actually keep in touch with what's going on. And one way of keeping in touch is to get another receiver. A receiver that covers the bits you can't listen to. Oh okay Peter that's fine but how much is that going to cost me? Well wait a minute it may not cost you as much as you think because there's something called an SDR dongle. There's a number of them around, but I'm going to have a very brief look today at the AirSpy dongle, which enables you to cover some of the frequencies that you probably can't listen to, in particular the VHF and UHF frequencies, which have got a lot of interesting things going on. Now the dongle I'm going to talk about is the AirSpy, AirSpy Mini. That's it. It's a little tiny dongle. It's got a USB connector on one side and then it's got an SMA aerial connector on the other side and you plug that into your laptop. Now, this dongle will actually cover 24 to 1700 megahertz. That's a massive great amount of radio spectrum. It means to say it covers the four meter band, the two meter band, the 70 sems band, the 23 sems band. Wow, I wonder if it will work on SSB on 23 sems. <laughs> Stay tuned. It also covers part of the HF spectrum that your HF transceivers normally cover, which is the 12 meter band, the 10 meter band, and the 6 meter band. But it also covers the bits in between. You've got the aircraft band, you've got the VHF aircraft band, and you've got the UHF military air band. You've also got the marine band. So there's lots of interesting bands and frequencies to listen to in between the hand bands. And perhaps it's good, as I said before, to keep in touch and know what's going on. You may not want to operate on some of these bands. You may not have the inclination. But it's interesting sometimes to have a listen. And bear in mind that if you're out and about, and some of us go out and about and stay in hotels and some of us tend to take our laptops with us don't we so we can keep in touch with what's going on what if you've got your laptop and this little dongle you can keep in touch you can also listen to the fm broadcast radio bands and remember that an antenna for vhf is quite small you only need a short width to cover the two meter and 70 cents and 23 sems band if it works on 23 sems we'll check that out later on so this little dongle could well provide you with the means of exploring those VHF and UHF bands that you don't actually operate on yourself or you're not sure whether you want to operate on but you're curious as to what goes on there and you're also curious as to what goes on between those bands so let's see how easy this is to install on your laptop the first thing you need to do is to download some software. Now, airspy.com recommends something called SDR Sharp, and as far as I can make out, that is the program that uh, is uh, popular with users of Airspy uh, products. But you can use other uh, software programs as well that will power this up. Anyway, I decided to use SDR Sharp. I went on to uh, uh, airspy.com downloaded it and um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube telling you how to install uh, SDR Sharp and how to use it so if you're not sure click onto one of those programs and uh, you'll, you'll find that it's quite straightforward actually uh, I didn't have any problem in downloading it and installing it on my Windows uh, laptop once you've downloaded the software plug your dongle in it doesn't need a driver 
you'll need an adapter probably to convert the SMA to a more common antenna connector and then a short telescopic whip will get you going. Once you've uh, up and running you'll appreciate the, the spectrum uh, display there which I think defaults about 4.5 MHz. I think it'll go up to about 6 MHz but you can adjust the uh, spectrum display uh, bandwidth and uh, that really is extremely useful. Uh, and then you can adjust the tuning steps, uh, you've got the bandwidth, you can adjust the bandwidth, you can change the modes etc. It's a very versatile bit of software, not unique because a lot of the software programs for SDR have similar features, but it's fun to hunt around and see all the various things that you can do and it's, it's very easy to operate. One thing I wanted to do was to find out the sensitivity of this uh, dongle and I decided to do an A-B test with the IC705 on the 2 meter band. What I did I tuned to the GB3 VHF beacon and then I turned my antenna so it was a pretty weak signal so it was sort of edge on to the beacon and I first of all listened to uh, the GB3 VHF uh, on the 2 meter band on the IC705 and I purposely uh, set it to, to uh, SSB so that you could hear it was a fairly weak signal and then what I did I switched over to the dongle on the uh, using SDR sharp and I set that to CW so the CW filters in anyway just uh, just listen to the, uh, to the to the comparison between the two transceivers bear in mind though that the IC705 was set to SSB whereas the dongle had the CW fil filter switched in or CW selectively uh, switched in I think that was pretty convincing. I'd have liked to have compared uh, SSB signals on two meters, but uh, two meters being what it was, there was no uh, SSB on uh, the two meter band at that particular time. <laughs> so uh, the second best was the test that I've uh, I've just done. But I think it just shows that that um, dongle, that air spy dongle, is quite sensitive. The next thing to do was to test it right at the top. And I decided to have a go on the 23 SEMS band, 23 centimetres, 1296 megahertz. Now, I haven't got a 1296 megahertz antenna, but what I decided to do was to wait until there was an activity night on, which there was uh, a few nights ago. And I've got a dual band Yagi, 2 metres and 70 SEMS. Now, 70 SEMS. Um, the third harmonic of 70 SEMS is roughly 1296 megahertz. So I thought, well, I should be able to pick up something on 23 SEMS. Well, I picked up a signal on 23 SEMS, and really, truly, I was quite impressed. I've got nothing to compare it with. So basically, it did receive a signal on 23 SEMS. It wasn't overly strong. It was on SSB, but it proves that the dongle actually works up there. Anyway just show you a short clip of what I recorded on 23 SEMS, not very long, but anyway, take a look at it. It works on the airband, of course, and there's plenty of traffic to listen to on the airband. Yes, two, three. Airfield information. Thank you, Azulu, for that. Runway surface report available from ATC. And of course, it works on the broadcast FM band very well indeed, as you'd expect. It's nice to be back. 
and over the next few weeks we'll be pulling apart houseplants, focusing on glasses and not getting our wires crossed when it comes to microchips. But today... One thing I did find is that you can uh, improve the reception by adjusting the bandwidth control which I suppose makes sense anyway and I didn't actually optimize that but I realized as I went through uh, using this uh, software that uh, that bandwidth control has quite a dramatic effect on the uh, reception the quality of the reception and rejecting the sort of background noise it works very well and I suppose if you actually look at what it costs which is I think at the moment it's around about £119, I checked. If you look at what you get for your money and then look at what a similar receiver might cost, conventional receiver, well, it makes economic sense. And I think there is something about knowing what's going on around you, the part of the spectrum perhaps that you don't normally occupy. It's nice to know what goes on. And of course, it's always nice to actually monitor things you want to monitor your own transmission that sort of thing with the dummy load you can uh, test the quality see the spectrum and so forth so it's got a lot of things going for it if you're just a casual listener i think you'll find uh, 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 lots of interest and really truly if you're just only interested in the air band it's got great possibilities uh, i said at the beginning that uh, not only covers the vhf air band but also covers the uhf air band so it's a nice general purpose way of monitoring the radio spectrum, cost effective, it's portable because if like me you tend to take your laptop around wherever you go, just uh, slipping the dongle in your pocket and having a small telescopic whip will give you something to play around with when the TV stations don't really put on what you are really interested in. And of course if uh, your partner or wife or whatever is watching television you can always don a pair of headphones can't you so it's got a lot of possibilities i was very impressed with it it's not unique there's plenty of others but i think for the money and the reputation and the backup software that uh, goes with it it's a nice interesting product one final comparison i found that the sensitivity of the air spy mini was equally as good as the icom ID51 uh, on the airband. That's uh, saying something. The AirSpy dongle is available from ourselves, Waters and Stanton. If you go onto our website, you'll find it there, and uh, we'll be happy to give you any further guidance that you may need, as we always do in the hobby. Thanks for your support. You take care, and as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.